get started tonight. My name is John, and um, most of the time I get the opportunity to play at a very special place, the St. Louis County Jail. So I go into the jail and uh, lead a chapel service there. This song is one I kind of do at the end of the chapel service a lot of times, all for Jesus. Um, but we have in store for you tonight a little country, blues, gospel, medley. This is a band here. I'm going to have Alan introduce people in his band. And then, oh, this Okay. Yeah, this is kind of a collaboration of sorts. Uh, we're Red Dirt Revival. We've played here on a few occasions. Um, it's always a pleasure to, to come out and, and serve for uh, the medical mission team. Um, so we're really happy to, it's a privilege to be here and, and to be able to play with seasoned musicians that, that have come up uh, from the south to, to be here tonight, to contribute, to serve. Um, so we are Red Dirt Revival. We, uh, we're all from Duluth. Uh, Jody, the bass player here, Jody Willett, he's from Originally from Esco, uh, Laura Miller. Uh, she's from this area, from the Twin Ports. Ron Allen, Pastor Ron on the drums. He's also from Duluth, and I'm Alan Delvecchio, and I'm from Duluth as well. Yay! Well, my good friend uh, Albert Svendal is here, and his beautiful wife Lisa is over here. She's going to be singing with us too. Albert's from Cloquet, Minnesota originally, and then Nashville, and then Minneapolis. He's our pedal steel player, so you're really in store for a treat. If you have a country vein in you, boy. So we're going to do some songs, and we're going to sing. This, we want you to sing with us. I mean, some of these songs you won't know, but a lot of them we will. And so... Yeah, we'd like to invite Pastor Ralph up here to uh, yeah. pray this event in, and to talk a little bit about the mission team. Well, we appreciate all the band members singers being here tonight to help us respond for the mission trip. Let's all stand and open the word of prayer. Then I'm just going to turn them loose and later on we're going to meet the whole team and hear a little bit from them. Let's pray. Lord, we're so thankful for how much you love us and take care of us. You are our Savior, our Lord. Tonight we want to worship you and want to enjoy this time of being here in your presence, enjoying good music. Thank you for the gift of music and how that can minister to each one of us. So let me just ask for just a wonderful, pleasant night experiencing the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So, uh, this is a song uh, that uh, my brother and I wrote. It's called Caught in a Moment.
this is a song called I Pray.
absolute blessing to hear that steel guitar in the back. Amen. It's just like, it just brings a smile in there. Oh, man. Oh. I just keep getting goosebumps. <laughs> So we wanted to challenge Albert to do, a, you know, because, you know, he's got this country thing going, but we wanted to, so Alan goes, well, I wonder how he'd do it like a blues song. I mean, how, how let's see what he does. Uh, 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 so we'll do a little heavy love. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
It is so much fun. To, um, we never, this side's never played with that side. Over there. It's the first time we got together tonight, so it's pretty amazing what God can do.
you got to serve somebody, but this is uh, audience participation. And we'd like to have Lisa come up, and she's going to sing, and Rose is going to come up. And uh, everybody remember that song? you got to serve somebody. Here we go. You got to serve somebody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs>
got some singers out there too. That's good. Um, so uh, what I like to what I do is I lead worship at the St. Louis County Jail. So try to get those people to sing. Hey, it's nice. <laughs> but you're all in church, so we're we wanting you to sing along. This is going to be a little country melody um, called the Circle Be Unbroken. Everybody know that song? All right. So just. If you want to stand up or you want to sit down, whatever you want to do, but sing along with me. Oh, the circle.
kick it around with the circle one more time. Albert! Oh, this. Hi, I'm Rose Reasoner. 
yeah. um, this is my first missions trip ever anywhere, so I'm going to Africa. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and Rolf talked you into it. And Rolf talked me into it. He assured me I could find something for me to do because I am not a medical person, but we are just hoping to touch people in some meaningful yeah, so, way. Yeah. So. My name is John, and um, I've been on mission trips before, but never to Africa, and so I'm just really looking forward to it. Rolf, Rolf happened to corner us uh, wow. in the in Hinkley. They were going down, <laughs> you going down or coming back, I don't know, from the mission trip last year. And I've known Rolf a long time. I said, oh, I'm retiring next year. And he said, well, you should come on the mission trip next year when you retire. And so we prayed about it. We're very excited to go. I'm Carol Goodman, and this is my second trip, and we take an optical team and a dental team, and the need is so great there. And I can still remember last time we were there. Now, they don't get a choice of frames or the fashion glasses, but I had this elderly gentleman sitting there, and five glasses came up under his prescriptions, and I put the first one on him, couldn't see. The second one, couldn't see. Third one, I said, okay, God, we have one pair left. And I put him on him, and I prayed, and he put his head down, and all of a sudden, he lifted his face up. His eyes were light, and he goes, I can see. I can see. You know, that brought tears to my eyes, and I thought, you know what, God? This is why we're here. And it's just, the need is so great, and it's just such an awesome feeling. So I'm so happy to be able to go one more time. <laughs> my name is Kathy Bloomdahl, and this will be my first Liberian trip ever. Years and years and years and years ago, I went to Mexico a couple times, but um, this is the first across the ocean. And the, way, the reason I'm going is this past year, I really took it on to study the Gospels in my devotional reading. And, um, and the Lord really talked to us about um, if we give to him in going to the prisons or giving to the needy and clothing them and feeding them. And that scripture really hit me. And um, I was sharing it with Pastor Ralph one day. He said, well, you, you know, that's why I go to Liberia. And I said, oh, I guess I'll go. <laughs> so... Um, I'm just praying that the Lord will really use our team and uh, will be very effective touching people in Liberia. And, uh, in case you don't know um, how it all works, when we go there, we go with a dental team and we work with a dentist there and go to areas that they don't have dental care available to them. And so we work, we bring fluoride treatments. And one of the things we do is we do fluoride treatments with children. And we have people that watch and look inside the mouths to find abscesses or, or terrible teeth that either need to get pulled or filled. And they get pushed to the dentist. And then we also have an optical side where we bring thousands of glasses, prescription glasses, that their prescription has been input into an inventory. We bring equipment to test eyes. So when people come to the optical area, they either go to readers, where they only need to see close, or they go to the prescription area, and then they get their eyes tested. And out of those thousands of glasses that we bring, the computer searches their prescription and finds usually two or three, or a girl said five. Um, but we're lucky to get two or three that really match their eyes. And like she said, that they don't get the designer frames. It's not like going to optical world where you get to pick your frames. And uh, there have been times where men will wear women's glasses. But they are so excited that they can see for the first time. I mean, they've never been able to see clearly. And can you imagine that? I mean, these are people that have grown up not being ever to see clearly, and yet we were able to provide glasses for them that they can actually see. You know, you think about even their loved one's faces or you see distance. And so it is a, it's a huge blessing. But we're going to receive an offering, and some of these are going to be the ushers, and so we're going to receive an offering at this time for the mission. You can make the checks out to Duluth Gospel Tabernacle, and um, they're going to go ahead and go down and and uh, give generously. All the money goes to helping us go there and meet those needs. And so we appreciate your giving. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you that how you've blessed us, you've taken care of us. Many of us wear glasses. Many of us go to the doctor at least once a year or sometimes twice a year. And Lord, we, we get all our needs taken care of so easily here. We have running water and healthy water and healthy food. And yet, Lord, we're going to be going to places where they don't have glasses, readers, or even the prescription glasses, and they don't have dental work. But Lord, we ask that you would help us touch lives for your kingdom's sake. Amen. do a couple songs that, that uh, were written by Chris Christopherson, and I'm sure you're familiar with them, <coughs> but you might recognize, might not recognize them. <coughs> yes.
Um, my name is Albert. Um, some of you may recognize my last name, Swindell. My mom and dad are Rick and Bibi. They've been here many, many, many years before they passed away recently. And, and uh, two years ago, two and a half years ago, no, just two years ago, at least, when I got married. And uh, how many of you believe that really we live in very tumultuous times right now? I mean, you know, you lift your hands up, all of us recognize the signs that we're living in, the days we live in. But you know, and, and we used to hear a lot of this in the old time Pentecostal church. There was a lot of times when people would talk about in the sweet by and by, you know, that someday all through our trials that heaven will be there. But you know, really, this song, at least my wife's going to sing it, I'm going to join her, is, is really a message of that type. So it's an old song you may know called Farther Along.
Thank you very much. Um, the next song my wife's going to sing was kind of, I think Elvis Presley did this one time. And um, one of the things that's lacking in our world today, uh, a lot of us don't have peace. Would you agree? I mean, real peace. We're just going here and there, all over the place. But this song talked about that. That not only in some day we'll have peace when the Prince of Peace comes, but we can have peace in this world through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. A song called Peace in the Valley.
The last song we would like her to sing is a song that um, talks about, you know, in this land, how many believe that this world is not our home, we're just passing through? Amen. Our treasures are laid up, where? Somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open doors, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Some called Wayfaring Stranger.
story behind this too because uh, for quite a while when I was living in um, California, I was caught up in the contemporary Christian music scene and as a young kid who was playing the contemporary Christian music, I kind of thought the old hymns were kind of for the old fogies, you know, the old hymns. And I remember there was a guy named J. Vernon McGee. Anybody remember him? Yeah. On the radio. Back to the bar. He'd come out with his, uh, this is Dr. J. Vernon McGee with the radio station or something like that. And he sang this song, his, his intro was, I'll firm a foundation. I just thought that was a fuddy-duddy song for a fuddy-duddy guy, and I didn't want that because that was up for the old people. And I didn't think much of the hymns or in the hymnals. I really didn't until one day I was at a church, an Assembly of God church, and I walked in, sat down, had nothing to do for a few minutes before I met the pastor, and I opened my hymnal because there was a hymnal in front of me, so I just opened up just to pass the time, and it fell open to the song, How Firm Foundation. And I read the lyrics, just read them like, like you would read a book. And you know, at the end of the reading of that, I was in tears. Because that song, there was something about those hymns and that song that struck a chord in here that I memorized it. And it says, when one of the verses goes, When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, my grace all sufficient will be thy supply. The flame shall not hurt thee, I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. And you know, at that point I began a journey on the hymns and the old hymns, and I got now such an appreciation because those songs were sung from the depths of the heart. And honestly, a lot of the stuff that's out today was not written out of here, it's written out of here, if you know what I'm saying? And so I want to do a song for you that my wife and I had the opportunity to go recently to the Martin Luther exhibit in uh, Minneapolis, which was fantastic. And so uh, this song was written by Martin Luther, for the Lutherans, I guess. <laughs> you know they were going to be Lutherans then, but called How Far, um, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
You Can't Hurry God. Do you like that one? Do you remember that one? No, he's right on time. Oh, he's right on time. That's right. He is. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Enjoy this.